Okay, today we're replacing a Skawa Verispeed F7. The reason we're replacing this is because we had a DC bus over voltage and now we cannot get the conveyor to run. So I'm not sure if this is a problem, but we are going to be replacing it. So the first thing is just take a bunch of pictures so that we know where these wires are supposed to go and try not to miss any. Check to make sure we ain't got voltage going in because that would ruin your day. And then we will pop these guys out. So that is the front row. This one looks like it is jumpered. So I'm just going to take that jumper out. That looks like it goes with this one. And I'm going to put that jumper in on the other drive. And with those wires out, I'm going to take more pictures because sometimes you can see more of the back as you're removing these. Fortunately, all these wires are already labeled, so that makes this a lot easier. But it is worth checking them all just to make sure the labels are actually in good condition because sometimes they are not. Now, I can pull all these through the grommets, probably pull some of the grommets out. And then over here in the back, we've got the ground. That one is an eye bolt, so that bolt has to come all the way out. Let's check, make sure there aren't any wires in there, because you want to pull this drive off, and, uh, and then find the other stuff that you got to take off. I'll loosen the two bottom mounting bolts, but i got to take those all the way out. And on the top, it looks like those do have to come all the way out. Got to be a little careful here because all the power in this cabinet is dead except for these wires up here. So if you touch those, you still can get shocked. So on the new drive, there are two jumpers and two dip switches. Dip switches both need to go to the left, and the jumpers both need to go to the right. and T1. We got 2L1, 2L2, and 2L3. Now line up with L1, L2, L3. These two screws that are marked, those are supposed to be jumped together with this little jumper. Right next to that we got the 151, which is white. We'll skip one, and we're doing 147. Right next to that is the black. So we got two wires left. So 148 goes right here. And 166 goes. 
goes on the front. Okay, so that is it for our connections. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So right now power is going to, but to actually turn the drive on, it reset, start. I'm going to hit stop because we got to check the parameters. So we're going to hit menu, menu, and enter. All right, so we are at A102. That one needs to be at two. It already is. There we go. So I'll hit up. That goes to B101. That should be a one. B102 should also be a one. B103 is at zero. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. One. Should be zero. 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 D117 should be at six. E101, yeah, 460 is right, 60 hertz, E109.5 hertz, 0 volts, 1 amp, 0.4 kilowatts, 100%, 50%, 1, and 1. So all of these settings are correct, and I have not seen any smoke yet, so I'm going to put the cover back on. I can see the run is not running, even if I press it, so I'm going to shut it off. Give it a couple seconds and turn it back on. All right, reset, start. Okay, so not a lot to it. And now we got that drive that we can put in stock.